Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. 9.26 p.m. is the time here, September 17th, 2025. It is Wednesday. All right, latest activity here shows a 2.5 earthquake up into the Alaska area. Uh, also, uh, lo looks like a little bit of movement here on the Petrolia station. Notice that uh, little spike there on the seismograph station that's up here around Northern California. I don't see it showing up there, though. It's, so that means that's probably underneath the 2.5 level for this area. But here in Northern California, got uh, a little bit of uptick here, stirring up. Uh, mainly across the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone and the northern end here of the San Andreas Fault. Quite a bit of earthquake activity inland as well. Now the trimmer map out here, let's go ahead and check this out real quick, see what we have uh, for Cascadia trimmer, which shows us 112 epicenters. Uh, a little bit down here across the extreme southern end, uh, but now it looks like we're starting to work our way back up north here underneath Washington. This is slow slip events. That uh, is being detected down across the area uh, below the locked region, right? The locked area sits up here. This is about 20 miles deep underneath the area. Upstream here is where the locked area consists of all that strain that's been building up since 1700. Uh, and over the last week or so, that's uh, there's been some interesting uh, slow slip events out here, mainly across the extreme southern end. Although tonight's activity, look at where tonight's activity is, way down south here. The, the furthest south that I've seen here, at least in the last week, I don't know about the last month or so. Let me see what we got. Well, there was a, a little bit down here in the last month, but tonight's, or at least today's slow slip events is right there. Let me bring that back up again. And we're going to go back here to the day. Yeah, extreme southern end, and it's really west over here as well. Um, not a big count, but we are seeing, you know, that elevated earthquake activity out here. It's starting to show a lot of crustal quakes out here, indicating the strain that's building up here across the extreme southern end. This area is super dynamic when it comes to uh, big earthquakes and building up strain in general. But uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of activity out here today in the smaller range. It looks like the biggest one here was a 2.5 right along the... Um, uh, it's going to be the Pacific Plate and the, uh, in this case, the North American Plate. Because the uh, Juan de Fuca Plate sits over here, so not quite at that triple point boundary. Uh, but it is towards the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, so watching that closely. A uh, little bit of activity up at Mount St. Helens earlier today. Um, I know we got that ash blown around up there. and A uh, lot of questions regarding that. Um, and... There's been a number of volcanoes out here uh, in the last couple months up around the um, Alaska area that's picked up high winds and, and um, you know, uh, pretty much put that ash back into the air. And it can happen. Uh, all it takes is, you know, some drier conditions. It is the summertime, so things are, you know, quite melted up there at Mount St. Helens. And the wind, I, I guarantee you, it can stir up that ash. It would definitely show up. Uh, a little bit differently if that volcano was in eruption stage, but it's not. It's strictly just the wind doing its thing. But we will double check the um, seismograph station up here at Mount St. Helens and see what we have here real quick. There's one earthquake right here. A couple earthquakes listed on the map. Nothing uh, big. Check out the previous UTC time. Yeah, there's... A handful of smaller quakes um, maybe some that they weren't showing or not showing here on the USGS map but uh, looks like they're reporting a, a few of them from this morning uh, the largest being this little point nine off to the northwest nothing showing up there across Mount Rainier I I think it's one of those things here where they're not going to report on it because the activity is so small up there in terms of the earthquake activity it's still continuing, uh, but not as intense as what we've seen there back in uh, July and August. But there's an earthquake, there's an earthquake, there's a couple earthquakes out there. And if you go back at the last um, date, that's a well-defined one as well. You know, it's um, still got some earthquake activity going on there across Mount Rainier, but probably too small for them to even locate or, you know, even really care about for the most part. 
couple earthquakes uh, outside of Seattle. Nothing big going on. We got one earthquake here this afternoon on this fault system that's outside of Mount Vernon area. But uh, nothing big going on there for now. Uh, let's go check out the Bay Area, Northern California. Uh, this earthquake from this afternoon, a 2.2, off of the uh, Vaca Fault Zone. This area has been showing a little bit of activity here recently. If we go back the last seven days and notice a number of these fault systems here showing inland, or showing uh, activity well inland, away from the plate boundary. This is the latest one here outside the Delta region. So uh, quite strained out here. There was a number of earthquakes on the Hayward Fault as well. Um, just like the San Andreas Fault there, the southern segment, just like the Parkfield section, just like the Cascadia, time has passed. Um, at least on the Hayward Fault there where uh, we could be seeing some larger activity here soon. A lot of, uh, a lot of time. But for now, some smaller quake activity. A little bit of movement down outside of Gilroy as well with a couple ones and twos. Uh, down along the Parkfield section, is this Parkfield section? That's right at the extreme southern end there of the creeping section. We had this little earthquake, 1.8. Um, north of Parkfield, the Parkfield section here is definitely primed for at least a six-pointer. It has these regular intervals of 6.0 earthquakes every 20 to 22 years. And the last one was back in 2004. So we're getting close. Extreme Southern California, got uh, some moisture coming in here. In fact, this area is underneath a flood watch. Um, that's all we need, right? A whole bunch of rainfall on these these uh, fault systems here that are well locked and loaded. The plate boundary being the main one, the San Andreas Fault, and there's others out here that are well primed as well. Um, I did notice, you remember, I think it was Hurricane, uh, was it Hurricane Hillary or Tropical Storm Hillary? A couple years back here when they had a lot of moisture dumping all across this area, we did see an uptick in earthquake activity uh, the months following all that rainfall. Sometimes, uh, you know, these faults, if they're well strained, that uh, rainfall can seep down there and uh, give just enough lubrication there to create some slip. And in this case, it'd be a big slip out here. So I'm going to watch out here and see how much rainfall to get uh, from this system. But for now, just some smaller microquake activity out there. Uh, a couple earthquakes there above 2.5. The latest one looks like it's way down south of the border. So aside from that, Small microquake activity there for now. Uh, up into Nevada, we got uh, a couple earthquakes out there. Three range, and uh, looks like the latest, so 2.9. That's seen a, a decent swarm of activity here in the last 30 days. 123 earthquakes with really no main quake. I uh, just had a, a largest event was a 4.8 4 .8 mixed in there. But uh, really just an odd sequence of events there. Uh, some activity up through uh, Idaho. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. And uh, see what we got. Make sure everything's good. Bells are off. Okay. I'm ready for bed. I think after this I'm going to be calling it bedtime. A couple smaller quakes out here uh, across this seismograph station there in Yellowstone. Nothing big showing up. I do like to check it because occasionally we do get these uh, earthquake swarms stirring up out there. Outside the OKC area, 2.1 near El Reno. Definitely some oil fields out here. I remember seeing them firsthand. Uh, I think it was earlier this year when I was out there uh, doing some storm chasing there in the spring. We got uh, a lot of oil fields out there. Same for Texas. Out there in the Permian Basin here, just thousands of oil fields. New Madrid seismic zone, quiet. There's that one little lonesome earthquake there from this morning. Uh, taking a look here at... Oh, there's a little bit of newer activity here around the Philippines. I think that showed up here on the globe as well. Yeah, somewhat deep right there for 5.2. That came in here within the last hour. But we got a decent cluster of earthquake activity down here across Japan and also up here along the uh, the Kuro Kam Chatka Trench. Quite a bit of earthquake activity there in the 4. Uh, but the latest there, a 5.4. Uh, so that technically makes uh, two five-pointers here today so far. Always some concern here that this may not be done. I know we had that 7.4 recently. That was the largest aftershock from the 8.8 .8 that struck back in July. But 
There's a lot going on out here. We've seen a, a swarm out here across the Nankai Trough to the southwestern up today as well. That uh, not really showing up too much on the USGS map. The four-pointers are. That's just off the Nankai Trough here. Um, this is the area. Even this region is not showing all the activity. This map right here is not showing all the activity. We actually have to go over to the Japan Meteorological Agency here. And I wish this was laid out here on the... I guess we can check out on the map here. 2.7 earthquake. There's been a... It's not showing all of them, though. Let me go back here a little bit. We had a couple earthquakes into the Nankai Trough as well. It's going to be this 3.5 and the 3.0. Um, these quakes right here, definitely within Section A of the Nankai Trough. And that is a major subduction zone there that's... Um, well, they, they believe it can produce up to a 9.1. This is an envision, envisioned focal area of a 9.1 Nankai Trough mega thrust earthquake, which it's capable of. And uh, this area uh, sees a lot of large earthquake activity here quite uh, often. Although back in 1944, 1946, we did not see Section E rupture, which means we'll probably see this... Um, potentially rupture in its entirety there all at once if you go back and look at certain uh, historical models here when we don't have an e rupture uh, the following event um, shows a, a full rupture there so yeah i guess i mean we'll see either way there's definitely uh, some earthquake activity stirring up here the swarm is around the adjacent sea of the tokara islands there was a bunch out here. It looks like it's calmed down a little bit, but there's a good amount today. Looks like it stirred up big time around 6 in the morning or so. Look at all these earthquakes here. There was a 4.7, bunch of 3s and 2s. All these are in that region there to the southwest here where this swarm activity is occurring. But we did have some movement right around Section A there. Uh, and that lasted up until about 7 o'clock. There was a few more at 7 o'clock this morning couple through eight and then it just died off here uh, throughout the afternoon but it uh it's definitely underneath a lot of strain out here folks so we do got to watch that further deep activity underneath the philippines region that's into the um philippine trench a lot of pressurization going on here across the area there's a couple of those three showing up right there in the, the uh, section a looks like some newer movement back over here across the japan trench as well 3.3 so the pressure is on New Zealand 3.4 older activity here across Vanuatu and the Papua New Guinea area uh, far as newer movement across this area of the globe uh, I don't see a lot there's some fours out here a little bit of aftershock activity there in Turkey Iceland seeing a 3.4 There's another quake over here across the Caribbean. Been getting a lot of movement out here recently. Let's go check that out real quick. I know the USGS has not shown it, but there's been a little bit of activity out here across the uh, eastern corner uh, or eastern edge here of that uh, Caribbean plate. 5.0 showing up on the USGS map, but there was a another quake there. Looks like of a 4.0 magnitude earlier today. So this region here definitely uh, can see some larger movement quakes. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's see here. Let's go check out Hawaii real quick and see what we have going on there. Because we should be getting or looking at an eruption here soon across the Kilauea volcano. Let's go check out the webcam here real quick. The still image. They do have a YouTube channel there. Uh, e. Looks like we're getting close. I see a little bit of, uh, it looks like some lava shooting out a little bit. We've got a beautiful sunset going on out there. This is, uh, yeah, this is current time. 68 degrees out there. Uh, deformation data. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, we're, I think we're at the final leg here, uh, in terms of inflation. Uh, more than likely, we'll see the eruption return by morning. 
So sometime between now, uh, West Coast time here is 9.40, uh, and, and the morning update there uh, tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. Because we've... Uh, we're up there in terms of the inflation time, so it could happen. It could happen any moment right now. So that's at the Kilauea volcano, there on the Big Island of Hawaii. Now, let's see what we got. Now, there's a couple areas here in Southern California. Actually, a good portion here of Southern California, underneath a uh, looks like a flood watch there. That. Uh, is from a tropical system what the remnants of uh, tropical storm Mario uh, looks like just moisture coming in now to Southern California that is expected to dump quite a bit of rainfall there over the uh, fault systems there in Southern California also the plate boundary not so much up north until well I don't know these weather models are changing like crazy um, we were looking at some rain here for my neck of the woods, but now it looks like it's gone. But yeah, California, Southern California here got uh, some decent precipitation totals coming up. And of course, with the thunderstorms firing up here, you could get heavier rainfall in certain areas compared to others. Uh, but uh, yeah, probably a couple inches or so of rainfall out there, maybe locally heavier in Southern California. It's going to be interesting. Oh, my dog is howling out there. I sound like a werewolf outside. I think he's... I don't know what he's doing. That's weird. Scared me. Sound like a Halloween movie. Anyway, I better get going so I can see what he's up to out there. He doesn't howl that often, but uh, I don't know if you guys picked it up there on the microphone, but it was pretty loud out there. I'm going to go check and see what he's doing. Anyway, I'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning for the Thursday morning update. Stay safe. Seismograph station's out there pretty quiet for now. Have a good one.